Hello everybody, my name is Hocus Pocus and welcome back to the Minecraft Let's Play. Today we are starting episode 36 of the series and we're kicking things off over here at the villager holding cell that I built in the last episode if you were here for that. If not, then let me just give you a quick run over of what has happened here. So uh, this small room is to contain any useful librarians for our villager trading hall once we get that up together. It's going to be built somewhere in the vicinity of this room so that it's nice and easy to get these guys from here to their desired location. Um, and basically it's very simple if we open this hatch here. Let me just bring my... Uh, HUD up here and um, you can see that there is a drop that comes from right up there and that leads all the way over in that direction to where the villager breeding uh, center is and it connects directly to that small 3x3 room that we built to um, briefly store any librarians that we thought were uh, useful. So at the moment these guys are kind of adapting to their new way of life, um, really don't know what's wrong with them. They don't really seem to step out of line all that often, but you can see one of them did there. They kind of just do laps back and forth. I would hedge a bet that this is something to do with their uh, their tracking AI, which should redirect them to a village if they manage to escape from one. I don't know for sure if that's how it works, but I would imagine that that's kind of what's messing them up here. Because they don't seem to want to move, even if I give them a way out. Oh, okay, okay, I take that back. Maybe they do want to move if I give them a way out, but of course I'm not actually going to let them escape. So, uh, yeah, we're going to let them just keep doing their laps back and forth in there while we go ahead and do some more work around the uh, base today. I think that we are going to actually be working above ground, and um, this is a hint at what we're going to be starting on today. What What is right in front of me now? So, uh, that's correct. You probably have guessed it by now because that hint was very, very... Uh, very lenient. Um, we're actually going to be getting work done on our sugarcane farm. So as I mentioned, we're going to be using a design that um, was suggested to me by a YouTuber who watches my videos. He goes by the name of Dennis and he suggested a tutorial from a, a channel that I actually don't remember the name of right now, which is kind of bad because, you know, I'm, I'm stealing his design. I don't remember the name of the channel. I will, in fact, mention the name. I'm pretty sure it was Nembon. G-N-E-M-B-O-N, -E something like that. I can't be too sure, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was. I will, in fact, as I say, find the true name of that channel and mention it in this video, just so that you guys have a reference point if you're interested in building this for yourselves. Um, as for this cobble, we'll probably store that away in the deep storage because we don't want to be taking up too much space over there in the small storage area if we can help it. So we're actually, uh, we're actually on the brink of filling up an entire column of cobble here, as you can see. It goes all the way to the top. So this room actually might be uh, in contention for some expansion soon, because, you know, we're uh, filling it up quite quickly, especially with things like cobblestone that we get very often. Uh, so anyway, why don't we head up to the surface and just take a little look around, kind of scout out an area for this thing to go. It's going to be quite big. It's going to take up quite a large area. I'm not 100% sure at the exact dimensions, but once I uh, take a cut break here, I will go ahead, look on, uh, look at the channel again and the video, the uh, Nembon channel, I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. I'll look at his video again, the tutorial, and just kind of uh, gauge what he has to say and make my decision based on the advice he gives, because he seems to know his stuff when it comes to redstone, and especially... Uh, when it comes to the collection system that he's implemented into this design, he's definitely done his research there because his 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 detail that sorry the video that he has made goes into a lot of detail. So uh, if I remember to, I'll link it down in the description as well because he definitely deserves uh, all the plaudits he can get. Although my channel is very small and a lot of you probably won't go over there to check it out, um, if a few of you do, that will definitely help him out. And I hope that um, that you can. Uh, learn from uh, him just as well as I did because as I said there is a lot of detail in that video and it definitely does provide the knowledge required to uh, build a pretty cool and efficient farm. So as I said we're out here looking for a spot to build this thing um, and we just take care of any monsters that want to... oh this guy wants to dance, he's dead. Okay so we've got our makeshift farm here. Of course, we're going to be tearing that down as soon as this thing's complete. Let me just take out this creeper here. These are the guys that I worry... Oh, no, 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 no. They're the guys that I worry about when I'm recording out here. So uh, let's just make sure we're clear. Looks good to me. Okay, so we have our villager trading center here. We kind of want a flat area of land to build this on. And I think that 
this is probably well suited to it once I take this guy out. Sorry about this, I'm getting quite sidetracked here. Um, I think this area of land here is probably perfect. So if I kind of just come out here, flatten out this, this uh, section of land. So from somewhere over that side to the bank of the trees here is probably what we'll look at uh, filling with this thing. And yeah, maybe I should just get to work and catch you guys after I have done so. All right, you guys, so as you can see, I've just finished up, uh, well, we've got a few blocks here, actually. Let's just get rid of those as well. I finished up here flattening out an area. So we've got from this ridge here, pretty much all the way across to uh, this small hill here, over to this hill here, and then, of course, back into the bank of the trees over there. So we've got a fairly large area to work with. This should be more than enough space. I haven't actually worked out the exact dimensions as of yet for this thing, but um, I'll figure that out in in a few moments uh, off camera and then I'll clue you guys in with that after I've uh, came up with the dimensions myself. So um, I was uh, talking about a video that I was learning from in regards to uh, bringing this sugarcane farm to life and I said that the guy's name was Nembon, that's G-N-E-M-B-O-N and I was correct in saying that. I just found the video again and sort of uh, took a little bit more of a look at what he had to say and gave most of it a second watch and I have to say that what I said before reigns true for sure he uh, knows his stuff when it comes to redstone so I definitely recommend that you go check him out and if I remember I will link the video in the description below so uh, hopefully some of you guys can go and check him out and I'm not I'm not saying that I have a huge audience I can send over there but even if only one of you guys went and checked him out uh, that's that's the least I could do for him I guess so uh Definitely go and take a look at that video if you're interested in building a sugarcane farm for yourself because he knows his stuff when it comes to redstone. So I'm just filling in a few holes here as you can see, just uh, doing what I can to flatten out the uh, land around us because we're going to need a huge flat area. So getting rid of these small ponds or lakes, whatever you want to call them, is going to do us the world of good in terms of getting the land together to get this farm constructed and put together. So I'm just going to keep filling in the holes here with the dirt that I've managed to dig up. And once I've done that, we can then go ahead and think about A, working out the dimensions, and B, getting a little bit of the groundwork done for this build. So we're going to have to dig out a few trenches for water to sit in. We're going to have to dig out a few areas underneath the farm for some minecarts to have access to, because that's how we're going to collect the drops from this farm. And then once we have all of that together, I guess we can start planting the sugarcane itself. And the end goal is to have a flying machine, which if you don't know what that is, then again, I'd recommend you check out Nembon's video. He kind of gives it a good explanation over there. But essentially what it is, is some redstone, some obsidian and some slime blocks. And all together, they can create a sort of machine that will fly through the air, knock down the sugar cane and allow it to be harvested by some carts. So let me just do a little bit more work here patching in some of the holes that we have scattered across our flat area here. And once we've done that, I will work out some dimensions and we can get back to work. Hey, hey, welcome back. So as you can see behind me, you guys, we've dug out a huge area. And this is gonna be the area that our sugarcane is built in. So at the moment, we've got these cobblestone walls running all the way around. That's just a placeholder block. We're gonna change that at a later date and we actually need to change that. This needs to be a block that doesn't interact with slime blocks. So preferably leaves or glass or obsidian. Of course, we're probably not gonna use obsidian. So leaves or glass will be the answer there. Um, in the middle, I've dug out a two a depth of two blocks and that is for reasons I'll explain in a second. The farm itself is 25 wide by 51 long so it's quite a big area and uh, if I uh, use this camera again as you can see uh, it is quite the grandioso build or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that line. Anyway if we hop in here we're going to start out with two banks of sugarcane then a row for water. So I've decided to go with gravel under the water and I think I'm gonna go for sand where the sugarcane is gonna be. I don't know why I just like planting sugarcane on sand. It just seems appropriate to me for some reason. I like the uh, color of sand in this game and especially in the new texture pack. So that's probably what we're gonna go with for the block that the sugarcane will sit on. And every three blocks here, we're just gonna place a piece of gravel just to indicate where the water streams will go. So. Uh, the water is going to sit on top of the gravel once everything is said and done here. So we're just going to place a bunch of rows of it and hope, 
Oh dear, beyond all hopes I have enough gravel, which I don't think I'm going to. So we might have to go ahead and harvest some gravel from wherever we can uh, find it. And I believe that there is quite a bunch left down around the ravine base. So we're probably just going to head down to one of the mines down there. Or sorry, one of the caves and just uh, dig out any of it that we can find since that is probably the best way that we can locate it at the moment since I don't have one of those uh, I'm pretty sure there's a biome now that has a bunch of gravel in it I haven't found one yet but if if we could find one of those excuse me if we could find one of those that'd be great because that'd be a perfect source of gravel for us we're using it quite frequently now as one of our preferred um, texture choices and for good reason as well it looks pretty cool especially when combined with some of the stone textures in the game it's quite a lot softer than it used to be gravel, so it's very usable nowadays. Anyway, you guys, I'm going to finish up this off camera and maybe make a few more uh, improvements and additions to this thing. And we will be right back. All right, you guys, we're back here at the sugarcane farm, which is up and coming at the moment in our world. So I just wanted to show you that we've installed all of the uh, gravel rows that are going to hold the water eventually in this farm. And now I'm just going ahead and I'm tearing out everything in between and putting down some stone bricks. This isn't actually a necessary part of the build because this is where the um, tracks are going to go for the minecart to run along. So it's not necessary to actually lay these blocks down, but I feel like it's actually worth just um, whenever you build redstone or anything to do with minecarts and tracks, you should just try and build the tracks and the redstone on a block which you can easily identify when digging around because if you uh, are digging through, let's say, uh, I could be digging underneath this farm for some reason, I don't know why I would be, it's highly unlikely, but you never do know. So I could be digging under this farm for example and I could be about to run into a stone brick block and of course stone brick blocks aren't commonly seen naturally, apart from when you um, find a stronghold and the chances of that are very low, so you're going to recognise straight away that you probably shouldn't dig that stone brick block up without checking what's on it beforehand and that is just a way to indicate to yourself in the future that you've got something important lying on top of that brick so uh, that's why I usually go ahead and do this so this is where the tracks are going to lay as I have already suggested so what's going to happen is the carts are going to come in roll all the way to the end take a turn at the end and come all the way back and then once they make it back to uh, one end of the farm probably over this side actually I'll build the uh, storage system they're going to uh, land land on a track which is going to allow the cart to automatically empty itself into a sorting system that is then going to stockpile the sugarcane automatically. So that's how things are going to work around here. Anyway, you guys, I'm going to get back to work here. Continue laying down this stone brick and I will catch you all once it's complete. Welcome back to the video, you guys. We are once again over here at the up and coming sugarcane farm. And as you can see, Every single row has now been filled in with these stone bricks and I explained to you in the last segment what they were for so hopefully Hopefully we don't ever come across this build underground. We shouldn't do it's pretty um, Pretty shallow. It's not very deep at all So we shouldn't come across it at all But if we do then we should be safe from harvesting any blocks which will cause an error in the farm itself So as you can see I also extended out the uh, rows one more block in this direction not in that direction though, that's because this is the side where we're going to be um, returning the minecarts and harvesting anything that they've picked up. So just so that we can access the tracks at a later date, I thought that we would install just an extra block there. Just to ensure that, as I said, at a later date we don't have to do any sort of digging that could spoil the farm. We can just access the blocks right there. So uh, that should help us out in the long run. Anyway, let's get down to business. We are going to be placing in some of the powered rails now. So let's start here. We can go every 10 blocks, I guess. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That should take us back. So in between all of these blocks, we are going to put regular rails, redstone block, and then more regular rails. I've crafted up a ton of rails. I don't know if this is even going to be enough. Probably not. So we are going to do probably some of this work off of camera just in case I'm running back and forwards with the crafting. But I'm just going to show you guys in essence what's going to happen here. So uh, we're just going to lay down the tracks like this as you can see. So the cart's going to come in as I said it's going to go all the way to the end do a loop come back and then we're going to harvest anything that it managed to collect. So similar technique here we're going to just start with a block there powered rail regular rail 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Well, we can actually easily do this by just lining up the blocks here, so like so, and then you just do one in front like this, one there, 
and that should be enough to carry the cart around the track. So let's place in the redstone blocks there. Then we can run back and put the rails in. So it's a very simple method. We're just ensuring that the cart itself can make its way around the track without any assistance. So that's why I went with one powered rail every 10 blocks. I think that should do the trick. Here we go. Powered rail, regular rails all the way into that block there. And then again, same on this side. So I'll do one more on camera and then I'll probably just finish up the rest of this off camera because I don't want to bore you guys for one. And for two, I'd imagine that I'm going to be running backwards and forwards doing a lot of crafting here because I don't think I have enough rails. I mean, I'm not entirely sure, but making a guess, I would say that I don't. So uh, let's go powered rail there, regular rail, regular rail, all the way up to this block, powered rail, then regular rails all the way up to the next redstone block, powered rail, then turn the corner, come back on ourselves, powered rail, a few more regular rails, and then new stack, powered rail, regular rails, all the way into the end of the run. So as I said, guys, I get three done on camera with you. The rest I'm going to do off camera right now, and I'll rejoin you when that is complete. Okie dokie, guys. So once again, we are over here at the sugarcane farm. Not sure how many times I've said that this episode now. If anyone has been counting, make sure to let me know. Um, so got a cow doing 360s over there, which is totally part of the build. Don't worry, he'll come in at some point. And uh, I'm joking, he isn't part of the build. He's going to die in a second. Anyway, I've had a change of mind. So contrary to what I said earlier, I'm actually going to go ahead and use grass to grow the sugarcane. The reason being is because this build is going to feature a lot of green. So I think it's probably best that we just stick to that theme instead of trying to make drastic, well not drastic changes, but instead of using a color such as yellow, which is going to stand out massively in this build, I think we're probably best off just uh, using the green and keeping things simple around here. Especially since this is going to be more of a natural outdoor build and I don't want it to uh, intrude too much on the environment if uh, you understand where I'm coming from there. Even though we're going to have a ton of builds out here that do so it kind of doesn't matter but um, anyway I still just want to keep it as minimal as possible since it is a natural farm. And I kind of want to just uh, let everything blend in so using green probably is going to allow me to do that whereas using yellow makes that more difficult. So. I think what I'll do guys is I will just turn this segment of the video into a time lapse. We're just going to be placing down these grass blocks over all of the rails and then we can rejoin each other to think about what comes next. Okay, so there we go. We are done. Um, everything is in place now for uh, the water to go into the farm and the sugarcane to be planted, which is nice. Oh, but I am going to be honest with you guys. My finger is actually hurting from clicking so much today in this episode. Uh, we've done quite a bit here. It doesn't, maybe doesn't look like a lot, but honestly, this is a lot of work. And I actually almost went bigger with this farm. I'm kind of glad I didn't now. So uh, yeah, that could have been... That could have been something, honestly, that could have been something. Anyway, you guys, I do hope what you've seen today, I think I'm going to wrap things up here for this episode. We have actually made a ton of progress. As I said, it doesn't really look like it, but believe me, this is a lot of work. A 21 by 51 area is a lot of work. That's what, so 51 times 10 is 510, times 2 is 1020, add another two fifty ones is another 102. So what do we have there? 1,020 at 102, I think I said. Yeah, so 1,122 blocks in total inside of this build. And I've dug them down twice. I've added in more blocks. I've added in the stone blocks. I've added in the grass blocks. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of blocks. It's a lot of clicking. My finger is on its way out. So I think I need to end things for today. Let's just go and sleep before we say goodbye. I don't want to be interrupted by any of those nasty creatures of the night. Alright you guys, so I really do hope that you enjoyed today's episode and you liked the progress that we were able to achieve today on the sugarcane farm. Uh, be sure to check out Nembon's channel and the video, I'm going to link that down in the description below. That's the least I could do for him I guess, although I'm not going to send too much traffic his way. Uh, if you did enjoy today's video, be sure to drop a like down below. That always helps out the channel, helps me to gauge the sort of response I'm getting to the video. 
If you have any questions, suggestions, or any comments in general, be sure to drop those down in the comments section below. I respond to every single one, so uh, make sure to get your questions in if you do have any. And finally, if you're new around here, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below so you can stay tuned to this series and anything else I decide to post to the channel. And as an optional feature, you can also press the bell notification icon. That allows YouTube to send you notifications of when my videos go live. So it may... I mean, I don't, I don't really know what the whole deal is with the uh, subscription boxes, but apparently they don't work very well. So if you are, if you're maybe not confident enough in just pressing subscription or the subscribe button alone, then click that bell notification icon. That should hopefully uh, keep you up to date. So once again, guys, thank you very much for being with me today and spending time to watch the video. I hope that you had a great New Year's Eve and Happy New Year. I forgot to say that earlier in the video, but Happy New Year to you all. 2019 is hopefully going to be a good one for all of you. Take care of yourselves and your families. I will see you all in the next video.